What's up, Eagles fans, and welcome into the film room presented by Chickies and Pete's. I'm Fran Duffy, and you guys know how I usually operate, right? Usually after the Eagles make a pickup in free agency or they draft a player in the NFL draft, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to show you a handful of my favorite plays from studying him on film. Well, look, obviously, as you guys can tell, I'm not back at the Novacare Complex still. I'm not back in the studio yet. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. This is something I've been hoping to do over the course of the offseason where we're going to try and dive in to really, as I'm studying film, I'm just going to ask you, hey, look, sit in my basement with me, watch some film. These are all plays that I've pulled of Jalen Rager, not from just after the Eagles drafted him, but while I studied him this spring, this winter, even going back to last summer from his 2018 film. And the first half of these plays are going to be from 2018. But before we get started, just want to let you know, these plays are not all of his best highlights. They're not all going to be all oh, these high-flying grabs. They're going to be a few of them, but they're going to be some plays where maybe he doesn't get thrown the football or it's an incomplete pass. Just kind of get a sense of what his skill set is and what he's going to bring to this Eagles offense. Really, really excited to welcome you into my film room and show you exactly what I'm watching here on the film. We're going to start with a play where he's right here at the bottom. And more often than not, that's where he lined up. He lined up to the far right of the formation, to the quarterback's right. There are some plays, and we're going to see them here, where he's lined up in the slot, maybe to the far left, sometimes even in the backfield. But more often than not, he lined up to one side of the field. And you look at that and you say, okay, he's got to be able to learn to run routes from every position in the field because that's what he's going to do with his Eagles offense. So that's a little bit of a thing that he's going to have to project moving forward. But he is a very underrated route runner. We're going to see an example of that here because all this is is going to be a quick little slant route. But here's what I like about this is that he doesn't just run this straight. He's actually going to get this corner to flip his hips by working outside. It's going to be very subtle. He's going to get that corner to flip his hips to the sideline before then breaking into the post. Now, this is going to be an incomplete pass. It's not the prettiest of passes, but again, just get a sense of what he brings as a route runner. And I want you to see what he does. He kind of changes his stride length a little bit. You see the burst here at the top of the route. He's going to do what's called attacking the technique of the corner. So he's going to get up on that corner really fast. You see him kind of change his speed right there and get the corner to really get stuck back on his heels, right? And that's just because he can eat up that cushion so fast. I love the way he was able to set up that route. It obviously falls incomplete. So you don't love how the play ended, but really good stuff there from Jalen Rager. And again, like I said, all these plays aren't going to be his best highlights, but they're going to be things that we get to see of his skill set. Now, we're going to see here at the bottom of the screen, once again, he's lined up at the far right. All right. Now, what you're going to see from Jalen Rager on this play is another slant route. This time, he's going to get the ball. We're going to see here his ability yards after catch-wise. What I love about this is, that, look, he goes 23 yards. You see multiple speeds here. He's going to accelerate through the catch point. You see him there catch that football. He's running through arm tackles. You see he's got that extra dimension. We'll run it back one more time so you get a sense of just his speed with the ball in his hands. This guy really has an extra gear, and you're going to see that number of plays here, not just in the quick game where he gets the ball in his hands, but also vertically down the field as a down-the-field weapon. So really like what we saw there from Jalen Rager on that little slant catch and run. They like to get the football in his hands in a lot of different ways. Really, really like what we saw from him as a playmaker. Now, there are a lot of plays you're going to see here where he's going to be down in the red zone, and they're going to throw him a nice little goal line fade. And this is one of those examples. Again, he's at the far right of the formation. So here he is here. This is just going to be a matchup play, right? They're, they're down on the one yard line. They're going to toss it up to him and let him go and make a play. And very often, that was how he was used. He made a lot of contested catches. And we're going to see here, is he going to be this guy in the NFL? Is he going to be that guy where you're always going to just throw it up and you know throw him a jump ball down in the red zone? Probably not. But it speaks to his competitiveness, right? It speaks to his mindset, his my ball mentality with him fighting for the football in the air. And I think that's one of the things you like about those small guys that play big. He's one of those, he said it after the draft, right? That he's a, a 5'11, 5'10 receiver who plays like he's six foot four. That's the mindset you like in receivers with that frame. All right, so on this play against Texas Tech, it's going to be a little bit different because what do we see on those first three plays, right? We saw him lined up to the far right of the formation on the outside. This one will be the first time we see him lined up in the slot. All right, so here's Jalen Rager right here. He's lined up as the number three receiver to the field. Now, when you are lined up in the slot, you have to deal with a little bit more congestion, right? There's a lot more bodies in the middle of the field than there are when you're lined up outside the numbers. So that's something he's going to have to deal with that we haven't seen yet. And here's what I love, too, about this play is that Texas Tech, they're playing a coverage that you don't typically see all that often, you know, in terms of, uh, especially in college football. It's a three deep, five under coverage. So you've got 
one, two, three defenders deep. And then look, you've got five defenders underneath. It's only a three-man pass rush. So he has to be able to find that soft spot underneath. And those, those bodies, again, are a little bit tighter because they don't have as much ground to cover in this underneath area. So here's Jalen Rager. He's got to find that soft spot. And you can see he's already done it, right? He's about to settle into that soft spot in the zone coverage. And here's what I love, too, about this play. Watch how quickly he transitions into a runner, immediately spins off contact, makes another man miss there. Really, really love what we saw from Jalen Rager on that play where you see that awareness with the ball in his hands and without the ball in his hands in the middle of the field. You don't see a ton of reps of him in the slot, but when you see those limited reps that we have seen with him on film, it gives you an idea of what he can bring to the next level. Really, really love what we saw there. Now, on this next play against Kansas State, these are actually going to be from the same series in this game. And again, this is from still from 2018. And here's what I love here. Okay, We're going to let this play out a little bit. The way that they're going to try and attack Kansas State here. Kansas State was a big cover three team, okay? So you've got one, two, three. These three defenders are going to make up that part of the field. So that's the defensive side. On the offensive side, what you've got is you've got four verticals, right? You've got one, two, three, four verticals. All four of these guys are going to attack the deep part of the field. And the thought process is here is that Three defenders can't cover four receivers. The quarterback's got to be able to figure out where he wants to go with the football. Now, often on four verticals, the receivers, they have the ability to adjust the route depending on the leverage of the defender. And that's what we're going to see here from Rager. And he's at the top of the screen once again. Okay, so there's Jalen Rager again, back to the far right of the formation. So depending on how this corner decides he's going to play him, he's either going to run vertical or he's going to kind of cut this route off. And what I love here is just what he's able to do to create this separation at the top of the route. You really get a sense here of what Jalen Rager brings as a route runner. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer here and you can see what he does. And what I love just the kind of the stutter here. It's third and nine. It's third and long. Watch the way he's kind of able to stutter and shake the defender off the ball at the top of the route. Kind of shake himself free. Look at him get the corner's hips flipped. Get into the blind spot and create. Look at all the separation. I'm going to play that one more time here. Look at all the separation that he's able to create at the top of this route. Look at him come off the ball. No false step on his release. Love seeing that. I hate when guys false step coming off the ball. And again, he's able to create that separation. Get out of bounds for a first down. Now, a little bit later in the series, we see something similar. And again, same kind of route adjustment, same kind of shake. And you see that, you know, that wiggle with the ball in his hands, make people miss, things like that. You love seeing that, but it's about more than that. You would like to be able to see the guy be able to create some separation on his own. So again, here's Jalen Rager at the top of the screen. Again, it's going to be those four vertical routes. This time, he's the lone receiver. You can see there's three receivers here to the bottom of the screen. So he's working by himself to the top. And I love what we see here. Again, just the body control at the top of the route, the ability to kind of create the separation this one falls incomplete, and you, you can kind of tell that the, he and the quarterback just weren't on the same page. The quarterback play throughout the course of his career just wasn't as great as you would like. But you like the, the ability to create his own separation there, right? And that's something that can be hard to teach. I think he's got a knack for being able to shake loose from defenders in man-to-man -man and in zone coverage. And I, that was one of the things that really stood out to me about Jalen Rager over the course of his career while studying him. Now, we're going to go to a play against West Virginia where, again, we're going to see some of those qualities. Again, that ability to create separation, to attack the leverage of a corner. Now, West Virginia is a big cover three zone team. They love playing a lot of zone coverage. They like their corners to be a little bit off the line of scrimmage. We're going to see here, again, look at the relationship here between Rager and the guy across from him. But they're a big cover three team. So this receiver is going to drop back. This safety is going to be in the middle of the field. And this receiver is going to, or this corner is going to drop off. So you're going to see cover three zone. And with that, I just want you to watch this corner at the top of the screen. When the ball is snapped, he's going into what's called a zone turn. See him kind of open up his hips to the field. Jalen Rager knows this, and he's going to attack it because he's going to do what's called working the blind spot of a corner. What I love here is when he gets to the top of this route, Jalen Rager's going to sink his hips. He's going to enter what's called the drive phase of the route, where now the corner doesn't know. Is he going to work vertical? Is he going to run a dig? Is he going to run a post? Is he running a deep curl? Is he going to run a comeback? With the way that Jalen Rager's body was at this point, and again, we'll kind of play it real slow here so you can see. Right there, you can see him got, you can see the turf beads kind of popping up, right? Then him just kind of dragging that back foot. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit. You kind of get a sense of what he's doing to throw the corner off. Watch him come off the ball. Again, no false step there on the release. So you see him sink his hips into the route, 
and just attack the leverage of the corner. He knows that corner, the way that he's playing with his technique. He's able to work towards the sideline on this deep bout. It's a great route to run against that coverage. Second and 10, they pick up 16 yards. So you love seeing Jalen Rager's ability to be able to attack different techniques from the corner, be able to find ways to work into the open field. Now, this is one of those plays. I talked with Gary Patterson uh, after the draft. I talked to him, actually, it was, the, it was day two of the NFL draft. And I said, you know, coach, and Gary Patterson is the head coach at TCU. I said, what's one play that stood out to you about Jalen Rager over the course of his career? He went back to his sophomore year. This was a play that I had pulled already, and I'm so glad that he brought it up. He talked about this 65-yard screen, a catch and run against Baylor, where he said basically everybody on the defense had the ability to touch him, and no one did. And so we're going to see this play here. It's third and six. All right, here's Jalen Rager at the bottom of the screen. And all this is is what's called a jailbreak screen, where all he's going to do is he's going to run on the inside here, and the entire offensive line, they're just going to release immediately. It's a jailbreak. They're going to try and just get him out, get the ball out as quickly as possible, and get him into the open field, kind of break him free. Watch all the guys that have the shot to be able to, to tackle Jalen Rager. First of all, it's a bad ball. He makes the first man miss. Then he's going to avoid the safety in the hole, steps through another arm tackle, shakes through another one, spins off another one, then runs away from everybody in pursuit. So you see that elusiveness. You see the toughness with the ball in his hands. You see the vision in the open field. A lot of things you love to see. And we're going to watch this from the end zone angle as well. A lot of things you love to see with a yards after catch weapon here in the NFL. You watch that with Jalen Rager here. Just his ability to be elusive in the open field. And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, it's the Big 12, it's college. I'll tell you what, everyone, you know, talked about with CeeDee Lamb and what he did. CeeDee Lamb's number one trait from Oklahoma was his yards after catch. In the same conference, his ability to make those same big plays against the same defenses. So you love seeing that from Jalen Rager here on this play. So this one, again, still 2018. Uh, we're going to do two plays here from the same game coming up. Oklahoma State. And on two of these plays, we've seen him in the slot a little bit here and mostly to the far right. These two plays come with him in the backfield. So here's Jalen Rager lined up next to the quarterback in the backfield. And he's just going to kind of take this handoff and put his foot in the ground on an outside zone play and you know, run to daylight. And you just love, you see that extra gear here. You love the fact that he was used in, in these wide variety of ways because it gives you hope that he can be used that way in the NFL. He ends up going for 24 yards here on this outside zone play. And then a few plays later, or a couple quarters later, I should say, they gave him the ball again. Again, here he is, number one, next to the quarterback. And this time, he's going to go 83 yards to the house on this misdirection play. Again, just sticks his foot in the ground and takes off. He was a return man over the course of his career at TCU, so you know he's got those playmaking qualities. Love seeing that from Jalen Rager. Really, really good stuff. Now, one of those games that everybody watched early in the 2018 college football season, one of the biggest out-of-conference matchups early on, was Ohio State versus TCU down there in Dallas at Jerry World. And this is one of the big things that you're going to see uh, from Jalen Rager, one of the highlights that you see on every single tape. This is him at the top of the screen. All right, so there's Jalen Rager. He's just going to work a simple vertical route down the field. So he's going to work down against this corner from Ohio State. And we know Ohio State, they love to play a lot of press man coverage, a lot of five-star athletes, guys that get drafted every single year. You know, you got Kendall Sheffield, I believe is who he's going up against on this in this uh, particular play. Jeffrey Okuda was the backup and he was the top five pick. So you have an idea of just that secondary. He's seeing him make these kinds of plays against this Ohio State secondary, really, really big for his evaluation. Again, watching him as a sophomore, it was one of the games that really stood out to me. Again, there he is at the top of the screen. And here's what I love. First, he's going to beat press man coverage. Didn't face a lot of press man in the Big 12. So seeing him do this against a quality defense was really good. But he's going to shake this press man corner and get off the line really, really well. And here's what I love. Okay, Once he gets outside, he does what I call hold the red line. Okay, So the red line is an imaginary line running right between the numbers and and the sideline, okay? And the whole goal of this for Jalen Rager is that he has got to be able to hold that line, stay on that path as much as possible because if he gets pushed too far outside, well, the quarterback doesn't have a lot of room. He's not going to be able to get in this throw. And you can see that. I'm going to just draw a little bit of an X there. He's not going to be able to get this throw in to be able to complete this pass to Jalen Rager. So really the big thing is he's got to be able to hold this line, make sure that he's giving that quarterback enough space outside and then what? You got to go find the football, right? So here's Jalen Rager again. You can see him track this ball over his shoulder with a corner on his hip and make this play. I'm going to bring this back. Again, we'll watch it kind of full speed here. Get off the line, shake the defender, hold the red line, 
Get your eyes back to the football, track it over your shoulder, and make the play along the sideline. Huge, huge play. I think we get a little bit of a peek at it. This is one of the highlights that you saw every single melt after he was drafted. One of the best catches of his career. Really, really love what we saw, and I'll just kind of slow it down for you here. You really see the ball tracking ability. Really, really great catch along the sideline. Big time stuff there from Jalen Rager. So let's go to another game, and this is still the 2018 season against Iowa State. And again, this is another defense that probably, probably I would say the, the best defense over the last couple of years uh, out in the Big 12. They're a team that will get after you. They don't have a lot of t guys drafted, but it's just a really tough, physical, smart defense. They come up and they challenge receivers on the outside. They're really technically sound from front to back. So this is a, a fun defense to watch whenever watching these other big offensive players in the Big 12. And so here he is at the bottom of the screen. Again, here's Jalen Rager right here. And all this is is going to be, again, another example of him attacking the zone technique of a defender. Because what are we going to see? We're going to see that same zone turn. Right, You see the corner here. He's still playing in that same kind of cover three look where his back is to the sideline. He knows that. Again, Jalen Rager, he knows the technique of the corner. So now he's going to try and attack it. Where are his eyes? The corner's eyes are looking at the quarterback, right? So if his eyes are looking at the quarterback, Jalen Rager is just going to sneak into his blind spot where the corner is not looking. I want you to watch. I'm going to slow-mo this play. You get a sense of what he's doing. Again, attack the technique, bam, right into his blind spot. So the corner loses sight of Jalen Rager. Is he going to try and run past him vertical, or is he running a comeback here? He's running a comeback, slams on the brakes here. Look at the separation at the top of the route. It's a bad ball. He ends up short hopping it into Jalen Rager. I'm going to play that full speed just so you get a sense of how quick he gets in and out of this break. But again, attacking the technique of the corner, getting into his cushion, eating up that cushion fast, getting into the blind spot, create that separation. It's like four or five yards of separation there at the top of the route. Now, all of those plays were from 2018. Now let's go to his junior season, 2019, okay? So we're going to start with one of the first games of the year against Arkansas Pine Bluff. And again, we're going to go to a play where it's third and long. We're going to see that separation again from Jalen Rager, okay? This is, he's at the top of the screen. Again, most of his reps coming from this spot on the field. So there's Jalen Rager. He's just going to run a little bit of a curl route, all right? This isn't going to be anything crazy. He's just running a curl route back to the quarterback. And you see him kind of change his stride length. A lot of times when you're watching Jalen Rager, he's constantly changing his pad level, changing his stride length, changing his speed, because he's trying to keep the defender on his toes and not get a sense of, all right, this is well, this is the kind of route he's running based off how he's coming off the ball. So again, just watching him at the top of the screen, you see the, the change in speeds there. You see the change in pad level. Watch his feet, the way that he kind of changes up his stride length there. All of that is meant to attack the corner. It's meant to throw the corner off his scent. So you can see the corner kind of squares up to him early. See him square up to him. And then he kind of opens his hips up. That's all because of what Jalen Rager is doing. Because he's trying to sell that he's working vertical. So the corner has to respect that. He's opening his hips as if he's got to try and turn and run. So again, that all goes into his ability to create separation. Now... What do we see at the top here? He's going to create this separation. The quarterback's making a tough throw. This is a freshman quarterback. He's making a throw from the opposite hash. This ball just gets there really late, and that separation that he had is gone. So what was great separation on a great route from Jalen Rager ends up falling incomplete. He gets no uh, no production there in the, bo in the box score. That's why a lot of people that have questioned, oh, his production fell off as a junior. The quarterback play was already inconsistent when you go back to 2018. It, was, it just wasn't as good even uh, as it was in 2018 this past season. So the quarterback play was very up and down, and that led to uh, the numbers just not being as good for Jalen Rager. But that, that's why you always have to kind of go off the film, go off what you see, go off the traits. He shows a lot of, lot of positive traits uh, when you're looking at him in a lot of different ways. All right, so we're going to go here a couple weeks later against Purdue. This was one of my favorite early out-of-conference games, regardless of competition, in college football last year. All this is is going to be a quick little hitch route from Jalen Rager on the outside. Again, lined up at his normal spot to the far right of the formation. Again, this is just one of those plays in the quick game where you can see him transition so quickly to a runner after the catch. As soon as he catches this football, boom, he immediately transitions into a runner, right? He makes that first man miss. And yeah, that's only an extra couple yards, but I'll tell you what, if he gets tackled there short of the first down marker, that's second and two, second and three. Now it's a 12-yard pickup, and it's a first down. He's moving the chain. So those little plays also add up and add yards. Now, we're going to go a little bit later. This is going to be the SMU game. And again, uh, when you look at Jalen Rager, we've talked about it, right? A lot of his reps, reps came to the outside, far right of the formation. When he lined up anywhere else, though, to me, if I'm a defense, if he lines up in the slot, if he lines up in the backfield, obviously, if he lines up to the far left, you got alarm bells have to be going off because you got to think, 
The ball's going to him. He's lined up elsewhere for a reason. And we're going to see him here. He's lined up in the slot to the far right of the formation. And all this is going to be is just an end around. He's actually going to go 29 yards here on this end around play. A little bit of a gadget play here from the TCU offense where all they're going to do is they're in the pistol. They're going to hand this ball off to the back. He's going to pretend as if he's working on an outside run, and he's going to pitch this ball back to Jalen Rager. He actually makes an alley defender miss here along the sideline, picks up a few more extra yards. So on second and five, they go 29 yards. Again, kind of showing off the gadgetry, showing off the versatility there from Jalen Rager. So really good stuff uh, from him on that play. So that was against SMU. Let's go a trio of plays from this year's Oklahoma State game. And we're going to start uh, with a play where it's third and five. And again, I talked about this on the Ohio State catch. This play where, again, he's lined up bottom of the formation here to the far right. This play was on every single highlight reel for Jalen Rager. It's third and five, all right? So they've got five yards to go for a first down. He's going to run a double move where he's going to sell as if he's just going to run a little hitch route. And then he's going to run down the field. Now, if you guys have been following me long enough, you know I, I'm not a guy that goes goo goo gaga over double moves, right? Double moves are designed to win. But I, it's not necessarily the route here. He does a nice job selling the double move. It's the catch, okay? Because I want you to watch a couple things here. Yeah, he's going to hold the red line, which we talked about earlier, and things like that. But I want you to watch what he does here mid-route to find this football. Because watch him here. He's going to roll off the ball. Again, no false step with him coming off. Sells that double move. Looks back to find the football. Then what's he do? Takes his eyes off. Did you notice that? He took his eyes off the ball to see where he was on the field to make sure he had enough room along the sideline. Right there, bam. Takes his eyes off the football. Tracks it over the shoulder. Makes an outstanding catch where he pirouettes in the air and is able to get a foot down. This is good in college. It wouldn't be good in the NFL. But he's able to get a foot down and make this catch along the sideline. So, again, we'll see this here from this angle. Just watch the catch. Unbelievable grab. There's hands and there's ball skills. And when you talk about ball tracking ability, to me, that goes under the ball skills category. And that is very, very tough to teach. You talk about receivers that are outfielders in baseball and have that, uh, that background of tracking the ball over their shoulder. This is one of those plays that it's very tough to teach because Rager didn't see the ball the whole way. He's a, he sees it at first, takes his eyes off it, then goes back and finds it again. To me, really, really impressive. And again, you just see the ability to then finish at the catch point as well. That goes into the hands category, but just his ability to kind of finish and make this play 37 yards on third and short. That kind of big play potential is one of the things that really stood out to me about Jalen Rager. Let's go again to that same game, Oklahoma State. It's first and 10. And here on this one, he's going to face a little bit of contact early. And one of my things that I've really hearkened on for the wide receiver position, just watching over the last few years, you need guys that can play through contact, right? You need, and this goes not, not just for receivers, but tight ends, ball carriers. You need those guys to be able to learn to play through contact, especially if they're going to play in the slot because you're going to deal with a little bit more congestion there. But whether it's early in the down and press coverage, whether it's through the route, right, or if you're going to get bumped, you're going to get jostled by a corner, guys can be a little bit more physical on the outside, or at the catch point in those contested situations, you've got to be able to play through contact. And here's what I love here. Here's Jalen Rager again, bottom of the screen. He's going to try and shake the corner. The corner grabs him. He holds him. He mugs him. So he's going to get a flag thrown on him. There's the penalty flag. Still finds a way to be able to make this play down the field. So, yeah, it would have been first and ten anyway, but I love the fact that he's able to still make this play. Again, I'm going to let this play full speed. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. He's going to try and shake the corner. Corner holds him, holds the red line, attacks the football in the air, makes the contested catch. You love seeing that. It's just flat out. You love seeing that from Jalen Rager. Again, fighting through contact early, not just saying, oh, I got the flag, the play is over, and saying, okay, I'm still going to go up and find this football. Just outstanding stuff. Love, love seeing that from Jalen Rager. Okay, one final play from this game. All right, now this one, a little bit different because it's kind of garbage time here. It's third and long, and he's going to run basically a sail route, what is essentially a cover two defense. Oklahoma State, a little bit of prevent here to try and protect the sidelines. And he's going to run this route really under between two defenders. You've got a corner here and a safety over the top. So he's going to have just this little space here. That's what, what I refer to as the turkey hole in cover two. Between the corner, underneath the safety, he's going to have to try and find a way to come up with this catch. And here's what I love too. He knows that he's about to take a shot at the catch point here. Again, third and 10. He knows that corner's not going to fall for anything underneath. He's likely going to contest anything that's in the intermediate area, protect the sticks. Watch Jalen Rager. He knows he's about to take a shot. 
And he's able to instead extend, make that play along the sideline. Third and 10, they pick up 27 yards. I love the focus there from Jalen Rager because a lot of guys, they may have taken their eye off the football. They may have been peeking. Am I about to take a shot from the corner? Am I going to take a shot from the safety? He didn't flinch. Kept going here, and you kind of see, again, the ability to finish there at the catch point, get both feet in bounds. Really, really good stuff there uh, from, Jalen, or from Jalen Rager. Now, a couple plays against that tough Iowa State defense. Again, this is from this past year in 2019. Third and seven. All right, this is going to be a couple jump balls here. Third and seven, bottom of the screen. Here's Jalen Rager. Matched up against a press man corner down in the red zone. This goes back to that play we did at the top, right, against Texas, where it's not about what is he going to do in the NFL. It just kind of speaks to his mindset. It, it speaks to his play personality. Watch Jalen Rager here go up and battle with the corner from Iowa State. This is a my ball mentality play. He's going to go up and fight for this football, battle against the corner in tight situation. It's third and seven on the goal line. Look at them snatch the football away, too. You know, it's not just that he's, he's going to immediately bring that into his frame. We'll see it here from the end zone angle. I'll fast forward a little bit for us. He's going to bring this in immediately away from the corner, away from the catch point. Watch him snag and pull it away, pull it into his body, come down for the touchdown. Really, really impressive play there from Jalen Rager. We're going to see another play here against Iowa State. Same kind of deal. He's at the top of the screen. All right, so here's Jalen Rager at the top, and he's going to be running another fade against Iowa State. And this one, look, for all intents and purposes, they're just tossing it up to him. This is a one-on-one -on -one play. They're going to let him go. They're going to say, just go make a play, man. It's first and 10, high red zone on the 22-yard line. He goes up and over the corner, makes this play. The fact that they trusted him to be able to make plays like that speaks, to again, to his play personality. I really, really love seeing that from Jalen Rager as well. It was something that consistently showed up with him on film. Now, we're going to go to another play against Texas Tech, and this is one of my favorites, too. When you talk about receivers and you talk about offenses, trying to attack coverage, trying to figure out ways to attack the defense. Texas Tech is going to be playing what's called quarters coverage, right? So you've got a corner, you've got a safety, Here's the other safety. Here's the other corner. These guys are dividing the field into fourths. All right, so each of these guys have a quarter of the field across the width. And really, when it comes down to quarters coverage, you're trying to attack those safeties because ultimately what happens in quarters is at, for receivers, when they reach a certain depth, it's not zone coverage anymore. It becomes man-to-man. -man. So while the corner on the outside may think, oh, I've got safety help inside, if you are able to take that safety away with another receiver, well, now you're cooking, and this is exactly what TCU does. A very popular way to attack quarters is to go with a dig route from the slot and a post over the top. This was a very popular concept that Steve Spurrier ran a lot down at the University of Florida and later with the Washington Redskins, is that they're going to try and attack that quarter safety. Here's the safety in the middle there. You can see he's got two routes coming at him. He can't defend both, right? So really what's going to happen nine times out of ten here is that this safety is going to run on that dig. He's going to try to attack that route, and that's going to leave a whole lot of space in the deep middle of the field here for Jalen Rager, again, lined up at the top, to run this post. What he has to do before anything else, though, he's got to beat that corner. If he can beat that corner... The safety is going to be taken care of. The other route is going to take care of that. So he's got to beat this corner at the top of the screen. So we're going to come off slow motion here. I'm just going to show you exactly how he's going to do it. Again, you're going to see him kind of roll off the ball here. Does a really nice job with his release. And again, what do we see him do? Change the stride length. Change his pad level. He's trying to sell that corner. Look at the corner's hips here at the top. He's about to flip. There he is. He's flipped. So the corner is flipped to the sideline. Where's Jalen going? to the field. So he did enough here to make that corner to open up the opposite way of the direction that he's ultimately going. And that's what you're trying to do as a receiver. That's the art of creating separation. You want to try to attack the technique of that corner, get him to, to declare, flip his hips one way or the other, and ultimately you're trying to get him to go the way that you're not, you're not planning to go. And that's exactly what Rager does here. So he wins the top of this route, does a great job on the top of the stem, has all the room in the world, and then you love the hands catch away from his body, tracking this ball and finishing at the catch point. So he goes 55 yards and a touchdown. Outstanding route. Great concept by the coaches there for TCU, understanding how to attack Texas Tech in that defense, but still a great job one-on-one -on -one of Jalen Rager there uh, on that play. Really, really good stuff, and we'll just see it here uh, from the back end as well. We'll just kind of let it finish out. Jalen Rager, just outstanding catch. You see the hands. You see the ball skills there at the top. So we've got a couple plays left here. Again, going back and just seeing the versatility of this kid. This is against Oklahoma where you're going to see him, again, goes back to what I said earlier, right? If he's not lined up to the far right of that formation, 
defensively, alarm bells have to be going off. When they break the huddle, there's Jalen Rager at the top of the screen. And again, he's just going to take this reverse. They're going to hand this ball off to the back. He's going to pretend as if it's going on some kind of outside run. Instead, he gets handed off. It's third and three. He ends up picking up 16. You see him run away from the pursuit defenders there. They do a good job play side. Plenty of space to that side of the field. And they're able to pick up a big play and a first down on third down. One final play here against West Virginia. Again, this past year, November, it's late in the season. Season's almost over because TCU was not bowl eligible. He's the lone receiver to this side of the field. So here he is to the three, uh, as the X receiver to three by one. He's going to run a simple dig route to the middle of this field. And listen, there's not a ton that he does at the top of this route, but if you watch him here, he's going to do a great job at the catch point of being able to pirouette in the air and come down with this football. You see it really well here from the end zone angle. It goes up, comes down with it. Just a great catch in the middle of the field. Again, potentially expecting a hit there from a safety coming over top. Doesn't care, doesn't flinch, goes up and makes the play. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of a new template here for our Film Room Series presented by Chickies and Pete's. We're going to be continuing to do this over the next few weeks, breaking down the Eagles rookie class throughout the course of the summer. Hope you join us next week here on the Film Room presented by Chickies and Pete's.